So it's my understanding, Your Excellency, that there is the upstream, the midstream, and the downstream. Unless we've got one license covering all of that, we can comfortably say that 90% belongs to Qatar and Shell, and uh, when it's Shell, part of Shell is British Petroleum as well. So I'm not quite convinced that the oil legally belongs to the discoverers in terms of the positive obligation contained in Article 100 of the Namibian Constitution and not so positive obligation in Article 95, the principles of state policy, especially the obligation for sustainable extraction extraction of our natural resources for the benefit of the current and future generation. The North Sea oil is up there and it belongs to the Crown. When you examine a similar provision in the Ghanaian constitution and the Nigerian constitution, it's slightly different from our Article 100 because it makes it much more positive for the state to own the resources. Now, if in Article 95, there is not so much an obligation, but an implied obligation tied to Article 100 and tied to Your Excellency's oath of office in Article 30, is it not an obligation, therefore, from the AG's office to ensure that what is in the ground until a license is issued belongs to the Namibian people? The Director General of the National Planning Commission in response to Itula clarified the government's 10% ownership, stating that the Petroleum Exploration Production Act regulates the full upstream process and not the midstream or downstream processes. I've been 18 years in that industry before I joined government. So we, I was part of the government negotiating team. These are things, and there's a rig rate, go Google, when you get out of here or even now, rig rates of the day. Back in 20, 2000, we, companies would pay about a million US dollars per day. Because it's an equipment you go higher, you, not just any ordinary company can run that. People with billionaire owners and companies, they put up that structure and they start leasing it out. If you go to Wolfish Bay today, before, as you drive in from Langstrand, you will see towers protruding from vessels. Those are the equipment. So these things are expensive. Over and above, that company has invested in acquiring seismic. Seismic is the data that you need so that you can understand subsurface below sea bottom. And maybe your target is at five kilometers below sea bottom. And you must deal with a water column of another three kilometers. So, I mean, putting the state to all of those risks, it's absolutely superfluous an exercise. So, come back to the exploration exercise. So that agreement tells you all the steps up to discovery. It prescribes to you then, having dis discovered, you have this many days. It's in the law. And that law follows Article 100, which is the Constitution, and the legislation has passed the law. The GNT sits across with that company. And they you back and forth, it takes days. You must make sure state's interest is secured. You must also make sure that that two or three billion dollar structure, US, if it sails on its way to that site and you have not negotiated well, we will bankrupt this country just like this. Because we don't have the money because we don't have the skills, because we don't have this, that, and the other. So this is why the law, it's called the Petroleum Agreement Model, it's called Tax Concession Agreement. That's really its purpose. It regulates everything from exploration to discovery. It then tells you, you have now discovered, tell the state, having discovered, go back, drill more wells, define the extent of that field, the head of state at the engagement also took the opportunity to put into context the statement he made during a recent Al Jazeera interview, citing other countries' experiences where oil was discovered. Of the Al Jazeera interview. 
you have an interview and the person is asking you, you have now discovered oil. Oil has been a curse in many African countries. What are you going to do differently? We're talking about specific oil, not the oil under the, all over our underground. It was the oil discovery owned by people. Those who went to have about 90% agreements are signed already. Now, if somebody owns in business 90% and government has 10% through the, what is your position? State-owned company. So what are we doing that? This is a very, when you are going to invest in well, uh, what is it? When you are investing, looking. I'm telling you, it's so costly. There were Brazilians who were here who were trying to tell us they found oil and so on. At the end, it was dry. They spent about close to a billion or so on. Now, government cannot do that. You take taxpayers' money to go and explore. Let those who are having insurance to cover them do that. We might have a free carry, and that 10% a free carry as Namibians, because it's ours. But they have a capitalist system, by the way. This is privately owned companies here, are privately owned. Uranium, that is energy, but it's ours, supposedly, but it is Chinese are taking it. They are having that company, it's their company. And our laws allow for mixed economy. The visit by IPC to the head of state was also attended by a delegation, which included the vice president, prime minister, NPC director general, and the attorney general.